uncover Rome's dark secret as we delve into the tragic history of the fascist destruction of historic quarters in the heart of the city. Join us on a journey to explore the hidden tragedy that still echoes through Rome's streets, revealing the impact of the brutalist demolition that reshaped the city's landscape forever. From hidden stories to forgotten corners, this video sheds light on a dark chapter in Rome's past that continues to shape its present. Explore the scars left by fascist rule and the resilience of Rome's historic borders in the face of destruction. Hey there, history buffs and architecture enthusiasts! Today we are delving into a dark secret lurking in the streets of Rome. Fascist ideology threatened the various sense of Rome's historic borders and it's time to shine again a light on this destructive history. Rome's historic neighborhoods are not just charming corners of the city, they are living testaments of the centuries of culture, art and civilization. From the winding alleys of Trastevere to the grandeur of the Colosseum, these areas hold the soul of Rome. However, a sinister force was at play. Mussolini aimed at the destruction and redevelopment of these historic neighborhoods. His contempt for the past, other than that of classic, and for the unique character of these neighborhoods was devastating for Rome and other Italian cities. Let's take a moment to appreciate the historical significance and architectural marvels that define these endangered quarters. Each cobblestone street, each ancient building, whispered the stories of the past and stood as a reminder of the rich tapestry of Rome's history. But amidst the beauty, lies a tale of destruction, a shocking example abound of historic buildings and churches being demolished. To make way for creating empty and alienating spaces according to the principle already enunciated by Mussolini in 1925. The thousand-year-old monuments of our history must loom large in the necessary solitude. This idea is contrary to the history of these thousand-year-old monuments of ancient Roman architecture, which were instead built in a continuous network of squares, porticos and smaller buildings. Creating a seamless urban fabric like a fascinating labyrinth, this character was reaffirmed through continuous overlaps, demolitions and new constructions throughout the centuries. The Pantheon, for example, was originally and still is strongly integrated with the surrounding urban fabric. Not isolated as Mussolini intended in one of his reckless plans to demolish the entire neighborhood from Piazza Colonna to the Pantheon. Fortunately, he did not have the time to carry it out. However, many other neighborhoods in Rome were demolished. The impact on local communities was profound, as they witnessed their heritage being erased before their eyes. And they were mostly deported to squalid suburbs, built quickly and without quality, far from the center and without services. The principle of large-scale urban demolitions began with modern urbanism starting with Baron Haussmann's Paris Plan on 1853 and thus predates fascism. Since Rome became the capital of the New Kingdom of Italy in 1870, the city has undergone significant demolitions and alterations. Here are some of the major ones, which will be covered in my upcoming videos the destruction of neighborhoods along the Tiber to make way for embarkments and the Lungo Tevere. The opening of the Corso Vittorio Emanuele. The demolition of the northern side of the Capitoline Hill to make space for the Altare della Patria. In the upcoming videos, 
we will discuss the fascist demolitions carried out in the center of Rome, including the stripping of the slopes of the Capitoline Hill. The opening of the Via del Mare, now Via Petroselli, from the Foro Boario to Piazza Venezia, passing by the Theatre of Marcellus. The demolition of the Alessandrino district and the excavation of the Belia Hill to create Via dell'Impero, now Via dei Fori Imperiali, from Piazza Venezia to the Colosseum. We will also cover the demolitions next to Piazza Navona to open Corso Rinascimento, reaching Sant'Andrea della Valle. the demolitions of the neighborhood around the Mausoleum of Augustus to create Piazza Augusto Imperatore. And the demolition of the Spina di Borgo to open Via della Conciliazione in front of San Peter Basilica. In conclusion, the importance of preserving the memory of the historic neighborhoods of Rome destroyed by the fury of the fascist pickaxe is not just a matter for historians and history buffs. It is about making the legacy of past generations alive again and preserving the identity of Rome for generations to come, an identity made of continuous transformations and overlaps. If there is no proper historical memory, there is a risk of continuing to make senseless and damaging interventions. Like the one planet in the archaeological area, the new archaeological pedestrian route has been created, a green belt path from the Imperial Fora to the Colosseum, to the Circus Maximus and to the Capitoline Hill. I will dedicate a video to explain why this project is absolutely wrong and the ignorant of the area's complex history. Now it's time for action. I urge you to delve deeper into the importance of preserving cultural heritage. Share your thoughts in the comments below and join the conversation to understand how we can grasp the value of an urban place interpreted as a space of continuous transformations and layered sedimentations of science and meanings to prevent and counteract all those who, cyclically, claim to offer a city more beautiful and more superb than before. Più bella e più superba che prima. E domani Roma rinascerà più bella e più superba che prima. Bravo, grazie.